Liverpool look to be on their way to three points, but a very late penalty in favour of Brighton turned things around completely. Janusz Mihailik joining me now. Talk to me about that penalty. Did you agree that it was a pen? Uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, by the laws of the game today, uh, you have to say it was clumsy. Uh, I think uh, Andy Robertson, if that's on his left foot, he gets there quicker, right? I mean, uh, I'm a left back. Uh, I'm left footed. I know how it is sometimes when you when you try to approach that and you're 100 percent because you're always 100 percent sure that you're, you're going to get there first. Right. And and you can see that uh, uh, Danny Welbeck just get, gets there first. It's a cynical one for sure because you look at Danny Welbeck kind of looking over when it happened and took him, took him three days to fall down. Uh, really, right? Uh, he's he's looking at what happens there, and then all of a sudden, two seconds later or three seconds later, he goes down. The contact is there. It's unfortunate. Those are the laws of the game that needs to be changing. Common sense needs to be um, needs to you know be used. However, uh, I'm sure Liverpool would have been asking for that uh, for sure. So the way it is, I. He didn't get to the ball. He made contact in the penalty area. And I think um, uh, we all have to agree that in these days, that's a penalty. There were definitely some unfortunate moments for both sides. Liverpool with two offside goals. Did you agree with both decisions? Yes, I think those decisions were right. I don't think that, you know, you complain. I think you look at the situation for Liverpool. And I was going to say, because it looked like it was going to be three points for Liverpool, K. And those are the, you know, they didn't play like champions, but that would have been a mark of a champion, wouldn't it? You know, if they if they saw that through, given the fact that, of course, it's an ever-changing team with so many injuries. You look at that back line that's been now different in the six or seven, you know, matches for Liverpool. And that's, you know, you never want to play like that when, you know, if you Allison and if you look at different combinations in front of you. Uh, so, so it, it wasn't great, but, but let's face it. I mean, they wrote their luck too. Uh, uh, Brighton, uh, missed a penalty and Neil Mopai, uh, oh my goodness, had Allison going, uh, totally the other way. So it's one of those games that it's one of those games that you always take it. And even with this result, Kay, I, I think that after, you know, when you get, get on the plane, it's going to sit badly with you because it was going to be three points while not playing well, but I think you still take it because at the end of the day, you want to put yourself in a situation where comes February, March, April, you want to recover all the key players and you want to stay in touch with the top of the league, right? And same in the Champions League, even though momentum was lost with that, uh, with the loss against Atalanta. But at the end of the day, something's got to give in the Spurs Chelsea match. It'll be all right because it wasn't a good game for the champions. Your clock was extremely frustrated. You saw him at the end sarcastically applauding the assistant referee, the linesman, could maybe get in trouble for that. But can you understand his frustration with the congested calendar and the players that he does and doesn't have at his disposal? Even today, going into this game, he said he'd be making a very late decision on who would be starting because of fitness issues. Uh, absolutely. I mean, but again, you always have to look back and say to yourself that uh, other teams are impacted. Maybe Liverpool at, at the moment are more imp impacted than some of the other top teams. But, you know, look, look what happened to Spurs last season when Jose Mourinho first came in. We were able to watch the documentary. I mean, the players were in and out. He sometimes didn't know who to play. Right. And so that's going to happen. You are the champions. They did. They were able to sign somebody like uh, Diogo Jota, who once again scored uh, in this in this match. I think you know, nobody's going to cry over that. So the frustrations of managers are always there. The biggest frustration for him was that somehow they didn't see the points through, all three of them, right? And once, once you know, he tells us all, all his frustrations and he looks at that, he's going to say, you know what, I would have wanted a penalty if it happens to us because it was clumsy. I mean, you have to look at Robo and say to yourself, he's missed the ball totally. I mean, that's that's... That's just the way it goes. It's unfortunate. It, it's it's taking advantage of the system, as I've mentioned, uh, because, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> Danny Welbeck wouldn't have done anything with that. But that's that's the way he go it goes. It's not VAR. It's the laws of the games that are ever changing, that are being interpreted in in a crazy way. Right. I mean, was that a clear and obvious mistake from the referee? You know, some will argue, but. At the end, I have to say to myself, yeah, it happened so quickly. The referee didn't see it. Now VAR upstairs, given the laws of the game, looked at it and said to themselves, well, there was no contact with the ball. 
I mean, he was clearly trying to clear it and missed it. So, you know, you have to call a spade a spade. Even with the players that Liverpool did have on the pitch, should they have ensured this didn't happen though? Because they've not actually dropped points past the 90th minute since I think it's 2017 right now. Or is it just a sign of the times of everything that's going on right now? Yes, I mean, you know, in a game late, a team like Brighton and any team for that matter is going to throw every, everything forward. You've got to do a better job in possession, right? You've got to make sure that, you know, in the last seconds of the game, the, you know, the opposition, Brighton, of course, are not in your penalty area. You've got to keep possession. You, you've got to make sure to see those points through because, as I've said, Liverpool did not play like champions, but it would have been a, a mark of a champion if they did get the three points here. They'll be absolutely fine. Uh, I think, I think, as I said, uh, you look at that and you're going to say that's a point well earned, given the fact that we, that they were missing so many players. Just to finish, Diogo Jota, what a signing he's been for Liverpool. That is now nine goals in 14 games for him. Well, as I said, right now, all the concentration for all teams, but for Liverpool, since we're talking about them, is to recover some of these big players when it truly matters. If you look at Liverpool right now, the schedule has been relatively kind to them going forward. Uh, you know, there's only that uh, meeting against Spurs, I think, in the middle of December. But when you look at uh, the schedule, not, not too many top four, top six teams there. Wolves at home are going to be always difficult. But I think that uh, once they start getting one or two or three players, when you can have the settle back for, you know, the Trents of the world, the Joe Gomez of the world, and, and everybody starts getting a little bit healthier and get a break, right? You look at Mane getting a break. What about Gini Wijnaldum? I mean, if there's one player that needs a break, it's him, given the fact that he's playing all the time. Again, he was key and very important for the Dutch in the last international window. Now you're worrying to, to not to lose games, to stay in touch with the Spurs and with Chelsea. And given the fact that those two meet, you're going to say to yourself, well, at least one of those teams are going to lose points as well. So it's not all lost, really. I know it looks badly for Liverpool because they would have felt that they had three points and they would have put even more pressure on Spurs and Chelsea. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.